Good afternoon, everyone. I uh, just want to give a little note to everyone that's waiting for the meeting to begin. We're going to start at 345 today. The city council meeting just adjourned a few minutes ago, so we're giving our members a little bit of time to get a break and get in front of their computer screen. So once again, Trade, Travel, and Tourism Committee is meeting today as scheduled. We will begin at 345. Thank you. Council members Bonin and Lee. Um, establish a quorum, which I just did, but technically let's ask for a roll call here. Council member Buscaino. Here. Council member Bonin. Here. Council member Lee. Here. Three members and a quorum, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Let's go uh, to the public comment portion of today's agenda. I'll ask the city clerk to read the call and instructions followed by the city attorney to read today's rules. Members of the public who would like to offer public comment on the items listed on the agenda should call 1-669-254-5252 and use meeting ID number 161-863-2891 and then press pound. Press pound again when prompted for participant ID. Once admitted into the meeting, press star nine to request to speak. The members of the public calling in when it is your turn to speak, please state which of the agenda items you would like to speak on. You have one minute per item to speak, two minutes total for multiple agenda items and one minute for general public comment. We will tell you when your time is up. When speaking on the agenda items, you must be on topic. If you're making a general public comment, you must address topics in the jurisdiction of this committee. Our goal is to get through as many speakers as we can. If you're not speaking on topic, or if we cannot tell whether you're speaking on an agenda item, you will get one brief warning from me or the chairman. And if you do not immediately get clearly back on topic or again, stray off topic, the chairman will cut you off and you will forfeit the rest of your speaking time and we will move on to the next speaker. Finally, for members of the public calling in to speak, as soon as you hear someone address you, you're live in the committee meeting. And if you're also listening to the meeting on your computer, channel 35 or other device, please turn down the volume on those devices immediately. There is a time delay between the live meeting and the broadcast on those devices, and it will cause confusion if you continue to listen on your other devices. Thank you. Okay, with that, uh, I'll turn it over to Dennis Gleason for um, bringing in the callers. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just a reminder to all our speakers, please press star nine to raise your hand and request to speak. And then uh, press star six when uh, you hear the automated message to unmute yourself. First caller, phone number ending in 6751. Hi, can you hear me? Go ahead, caller. Please you state your me? name and the items you'd like to speak on. Uh, my name is Robin Rodriguez. I'd like to speak on item 11. Go ahead, you have one minute. My name is Robin Rodriguez. I'm an organizing director with Unite Here Local 11. We represent close to 4,000 concessions workers at LAX, and we urge you to vote no on the proposed third round of rent relief for airport concessionaires. We believe the package before you is both fiscally and ethically irresponsible, providing unnecessary relief to companies that have already received relief packages extending well into the future. First, LAWA's current relief proposal should be limited to allocating the $36.8 million LAWA received in grants provided by the American Rescue Plan, not the full $130 million LAWA projects for its fiscal impact. Second, this relief program promises further relief next June, resetting the minimum annual guarantee to a potentially lower level and possibly providing additional future relief to concessionaires in so doing. But concessionaires have already received 15 months of rent relief that included two-year lease extensions specifically meant to allow them to make extra money as compared to their original terms as business recovers into the future. Business is currently in very healthy recovery at LAX, and concessionaires have already received relief for the future in these lease extensions. They don't need to receive it. Thank you, caller. Your time has expired. Next caller, phone number ending in 2531. Please press star six to unmute. Go ahead, caller. Please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Hello, my name is Tanisha Miles. I'm going to speak on item 11. Go ahead. You have one minute. Hi, my name is Tanisha Miles, and I've been working at uh, LAX for HMS Host for 10 years. I'm calling you to ask you to vote no on rent relief for the airport companies. I don't think the company should get more relief or more opportunities at the airport until they're done more for the workers. 
we still have workers that are laid off. We haven't got a raise in three years. Like, they need to pay us enough to live in L.A. and hire enough people so that we aren't doing the jobs of two and three people. So I'm cautioning you to please vote no on item 11 because they're not helping their workers at all, so they don't deserve any help themselves. Thank you. Next caller, phone number ending in 6751. I'm sorry, we did that one already. Uh, phone number ending in 5959. Go ahead, caller. Please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Hello, my name is Kevin. Can you hear me? Go ahead. We can hear you. All right. Uh, my name is Kevin, and I've been working at LAX for about a year now. I'm calling to ask you to vote for no on rent relief for airport companies. I don't think companies should get more relief or more oppor opportunities at the airport until they do more for the workers. They need to pay us enough to live in LA and hire enough people so that we are doing we are not doing the jobs of two or three people. Please be, vote no on red relief. Next caller, phone number ending in one zero seven five. Hello, ahead, my name is Stella. Hello, my name is Stella Suarez Hamilton. Can I speak on all available items? And after general public comment, please. Go ahead. You have three minutes. Thank you. I want to start on item one. It's at the top, but um, I had a question that I wanted to pose before I start on item one. I was on the call for about 11 minutes. What item were you guys discussing with something missing from the agenda item? So for item one, there's talking about the impact of COVID-19. I'm just going to speak from my heart. As a transgender person, you guys are lighting up the city council for transgender people. COVID-19 has been a nightmare. Um, marketing promotion, planning, technology, safety, public safety, security, all that has been affected by the stigma that has been. And some individuals in the council have contributed to that stigma. These vaccine mandates have hurt the finances and the capital improvement project, right? Public safety, these mandates are not good for these pe for people. The vaccine mandates are unconstitutional and their impact has been deadly. Stigma kills. Uh, I wasn't allowed to talk about talking in the meeting earlier. So I have a lot more to say and you know I do. So for item two, there's a backlog of container vessels. I live over by the harbor. It's a big problem. All right, it stinks. You can see the smog. If you go up to the little Korean friendship bell, stand at the highest point of San Pedro, there is a disgusting smog line that you can see. And you can see all of the little containers, all the ships out there. It's a problem. And it's not, a, it's not just the environmental impact. All right, these backups are caused a lot by worker shortage and a lot by these vaccine mandates, it's aggravating the issue. All right, now we got people calling in from LAX. Give them more than a minute, goddammit. Tell them that they need to have public comment and item three, item four, whatever you guys are talking about. God damn it, these people are working for you. They're the heroes, right? Give them more than a damn minute. All right, now for my general public comment, we the people demand a redress of the vaccine proof ordinance. It is segregation. I am gonna have a harder time finding a job just for simply making a choice about my own body. That is ridiculous. I do not show any symptoms. And honestly, statistical manipulation, non-response bias is a term in statistics. Non-response bias is what's happening if you are only testing vaccinated in, or unvaccinated individuals, allowing vaccinated individuals to go infect people walking around with a false sense of security. You guys are eugenicists causing a revival of the eugenics movement. And we see that with the Uyghurs in China disappearing. We're gonna start seeing it here with people like LGBT people, transgender people who have been silenced and pushed out of the- Thank you, Color, your time has expired.
Next caller, please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Hi, my name is Donisa Robinson and I'd like to speak on item 11. Go ahead, you have one minute. Hi, my name is Donisa Robinson. I've worked at LAX for HMS Health for approximately seven years. I am one of the workers who are waiting to be called back. And I am asking and urging you to vote no on rent relief for the airport. It's not fair that they're continuing to get rent relief and they have workers that, like myself that is vaccinated and ready to come to work. You have workers over there that's doing jobs of two or three people and you have workers like myself that are waiting to come back. So I'm asking you to please vote no on the rent relief for LAX. They need no more opportunities to proceed. The workers need help. We have not received a raise in over three years. It's not fair to us. We need help. So again, vote no on rent relief for airport. Thank you. Thank you. Next caller, please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Go ahead, caller. Please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Hello, Chair Buscano, members Bonin and Lee. My name is Maria Tangan and I'm calling about item number 11. Go ahead, you have one minute. I am an employee of Hudson News and I manage Terminal 5 and there's about five stores. I've actually worked for the company for about six years. Now, due to the pandemic and reduced passengers travel for LAX, Hudson had furloughed me back in March 2020. Um, fortunately, I was able to maintain my health care and other benefits while furloughed, and Hudson has honored my seniority when calling me back to work. I am back, and I do appreciate the relief that Lala has provided their con concessionaires, and I truly believe it has minimized my time being furloughed and allowed Hudson to continue my health care. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next caller. Caller ending in 4024. Please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Uh, I want to speak on all items and general public comments, sir. That gives me total two minutes. Is that okay? Go ahead, caller. Thank you, Nader. Um, item one regarding um, the, the, the harbor, uh, it's unconstitutional that you um, hold these people accountable for not bringing merchandise to sell shit in Italian land, CD15. Must apologize to niggas. Item 11, niggas don't understand slavery. For years, black people at airport have been slaves to unsatisfactory work habits. And Joe nigger Does this have anything to do with the agenda? You stupid nigger, shut up and let me finish, asshole. You interrupt me. I lose my train a twat, you fucking twat head. Shut up. Mr. Chair, this Is has nothing you, to do with Joe, the agenda. I suggest you Joey come. Boot Honest, Joey Boot Honest, suck a big cock, asshole. And fly an airplane one time and see if it knows what it smells like. When you don't got enough people to clean the airplanes and take the luggage in and out of that fucking little duck hole and put all the luggage in the racks. So you know what I'm talking about, Joey Bucket? You bucket of shit? You stupid asshole? What about you, Lee? What about you? Look at you and Mr. Bond and the transportation nigger. Speaker, speaker, I'm so, I'm speaker, speaker, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for interrupting, but what does this have to do with the, any of the agenda items? Or, or do you want to just go to public comment right now? General public comment. Hello, speaker? Yeah, Joey Bucket of shit. You should let people say things that are true about Okay. Now. Next next caller, please. Go ahead, caller. Please state your name and the items you'd like uh, to speak of. 
It's all the items in the general public coming. Go ahead, you have three minutes. Yes, that's right. Now we got all this shit about the ships. What about the ships that come from China? All you got to do is bring them in. Just let them motherfuckers drive the boat up to the fucking dock and just unload the containers. That's all you got to do. But because of Joey Bucket, you have to have all these union contracts. And they pushing the boats out further and further into the Pacific Ocean, surrounded by sharks and plankton. And that's wrong. The Chinese want to come in, drop their shit up, and go back to China. They don't want to be out there. Now, as far as COVID, you got to get rid of the mandate. That's the trouble with the travel and terrorism of LA. You terrorizing businesses asking for papers. We don't need no papers. Outside of L.A. City, Joey Bucket correct on that part. Now we get to the airport, and we have a problem, Mr. City Attorney. It appears Mark Bonnet has preconditioned the meeting before it started, and the recording is present with the FBI. You see, you see that happened before the recording started, Mr. City Attorney. What the fuck is Mike Bonnet doing starting a meeting before the meeting, making decisions before we speak? Joey Bucket not even in the room, fool. Now, how the hell do you do it? Mike Bonnet always doing sneaky shit all over the city, fucking with the airport, fucking with the union. All they want is to get free rent and charge $9 for a bottle of water. Now, what the hell wrong with this, Mike Bonnet? Recall Mike Bonnet, put Joey Buckets in his mayor while we put Mike Bonnet out the street. What do you say, everybody? Let's get it done. Let's roll it out. Let's bring the economy back and put Bonin away in prison where he belongs, violating the Brown Act, violating speaker, the California. Speaker, speaker oh, this, is going to be, this is going to be a general the- public comment, Speaker. Okay, the caller's time has expired. I mean, uh, can you all hear me? I, I asked for a next caller a, a minute, and uh, he, he had to move on. Did you not hear me? He was not on topic. Next caller. Caller uh, 9401, please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Good afternoon, Chair Busco. I and all members of Bonner and Lee. My name is Simeon Stewart, and I operate concessions uh, at LAX with, as a Hudson partner. It's an understatement to say that these past 20 months have been extremely tough, tough on our employees and our businesses at LAX. Due to the pandemic, we had to furlough nearly all of our 500 employees. If LAWA had not taken action in March 2020 to amend our lease agreement and relieve us of our minimum annual guarantee rent, all of our concessionaires would likely not be in business today. And contrary to rumors, no one wrote us a check. This relief allowed us to keep eight Hudson stores out of the 48 that we have open, one in each terminal with limited hours to serve the few passengers who flew in the early months of the pandemic. Because LAWA chose not to default our agreement, we have been able to reopen stores and bring back employees as passenger traffic has returned. Pleased to say that 80% of our workforce is back at LAX and all the stores are open now. We hope to return everyone to work soon. Today's amendment will allow us to continue to navigate the pandemic. We respectfully request you approve today's amendment for the LAX concessionaires. On behalf of my partners, ACDB colleagues, and our employees, thank you for your consideration. 
Thank you, caller. Next caller, phone number ending in 3150. Go ahead, caller, please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Uh, caller ending in 3150. 3150. Yeah. Hello, I, I apologize. Good afternoon, distinguished council people, council members Lee, Booth, Kaino, Bonin. Uh, my name is Greg Plummer. Uh, I'm a food and beverage ACDB operator at LAX. We operate eight uh, locations under the URW contract, and we're calling in today to say thank you for the support um, the law was provided and giving us rent. Uh, relief during this tough time. Uh, while it's been tough on everybody, you know, as a business, we thrive on traffic in the actual terminals. So without that traffic, it's very difficult for us to make uh, make ends meet. Now, I understand the team members are looking for higher wages and some are unhappy, and we really wish that we could rectify that, and we hope that we can rectify that. I'm saying here today that without this relief, it doesn't benefit anybody. No one, no one is able to get higher wages. No one's able to kind of stay in a viable position if we don't have this type of relief from the airport. So thank you and vote yes today on item number 11. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. We're on to our last caller, but we have several others that are in the queue but do not have their hands raised. If you wish to address the committee, please press star nine so we can tell you'd like to address the committee. We are on to our last caller, uh, calling user two. Go ahead, caller, please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. No! Next color, 6284. Color with the phone number ending in 6284, please press star six to unmute. Last call for uh, caller ending in 6284. Please press star six to unmute. Okay, we'll move on to our next caller. Phone number ending in 9720. Please press star six to unmute. Go ahead, caller. Please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Good afternoon. My name is Connie Williams. I would like to speak on item number 11 today and request your support to provide relief to areas to overcome these challenging times. I've been employed at areas for about five years at the LAX airport. I think working at LAX has given me a great opportunity, and I enjoy working with my team members. I've enjoyed um, having all the team members come back, and I've um, loved their support during this pandemic. I am grateful for my job as I lost my husband of 25 years during the pandemic and having the job and um, having my area support team support me um, was great. Thank you so much. So yes, I'm 11. Thank you, caller. Caller ending in uh, 4925. Hello, this Go ahead, caller. Please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Go ahead, caller. This is Michael Washington. I want to speak on item number 11. Uh, good afternoon, Chair uh, Boscano, Mr. Bonham, as well as Mr. Lee. Thank you for allowing us this opportunity to address the tra Trade, Travel, and Tourism Committee. My name is Michael Washington. I'm a member. I'm an ACDBE local business partner with HMS Host. As you know, the past 20 months have been extremely tough on our employees and our businesses at LAX. Because of the pandemic, we laid off most of our employees and lost almost all of our income. 
If Mala had not taken action in March of 2020 to amend our lease agreement and relieve us of our minimal annual guarantee rent, we would likely be out of business. This relief allowed us to keep three of our nine restaurants at Terminal 7 and 8 open during the tough months of the pandemic and keep our employees employed. Also, the relief also allowed us to keep our business alive. Now, things are opening back up, though our sales are not at pre for pandemic levels, we're optimistic about our future. Today's amendment will allow us to continue to recover from the pandemic. Consequently, we respectfully request you approve today's amendment for LAX concessionaires and small business operators. So vote yes on item 11. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, caller. And we are now on our last caller. This will be phone number ending in 9235. Caller with the phone number ending in 9235, please press star six to unmute. Go ahead, caller. Please state your uh, name and the items you'd like to speak on. Douglas Marmol, uh, item 11. Go ahead. You have one minute. Uh, my name is Douglas Marmol, and I have worked uh, for h and Hope for the past 26 years. And uh, the reason why I'm calling is I would like you to vote no on the plan release for all companies at the airport. They had enough already, and we haven't had a raise for almost four years already. So I urge you to vote no. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Chair, those are all the callers in the queue. Thank you to all the callers who have joined us. Uh, with that, members, we can turn your attention to the agenda. Um, I ask that uh, we approve on consent five through 11. Uh, any of those items you'd like to hear or be placed on hold? Uh, yes, I'd like to uh, hold and discuss item 11. Item 11. Any others? No. Okay, hearing none, then we'll um, recommend we approve items five through 10 on consent. A roll call, please. Councilmember Buscaino. Aye. Councilmember Bonin. Aye. Council Member Lee. Aye. Those items are approved. Fantastic. Thank you. Let's now turn to discussion item number one. If you can read that into the record, please. Item number one, Executive Director of the Department of Convention and Tourism Development to report relative to the status of department activities, operations, finances, capital improvement projects, public safety and security, planning, technology, marketing promotions, and related matters pursuant to motion Bonin uh, Buscaino Bonin, including an update on the impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic and the department's response thereto. Thank you so much. I see you before us, um, General Manager and Executive Director of the Department of Convention and Tourism Development, Doan Liu. Thank you, Doan, for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to give our quarterly report and an update on the activities of our newly named department, the City Tourism Department. Next slide, please. If you'll recall, the mayor set a goal of achieving 50 million visitors annually by the year 2020. And we were fortunate enough to achieve that goal and hit 50 million visitors two years early in 2018. Uh, actually got the 50.7 million visitors in 2019, but you can see a sharp drop off uh, due to the pandemic in 2020, almost uh, half uh, the number of visitors. Uh, we've reset that goal, and we would like to uh, 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 use all efforts to get back to 50 million visitors or a pre-pandemic level by 2024. Um, according to the Tourism Economics recent forecast, we may even be able to hit this earlier in, in 2023, so we're keeping our fingers crossed. Next slide. On the lodging side, um, you'll see the average occupancies. In 2019, um, we were extremely lucky and our hotels were averaging 81.4% uh, occupancy, which is extremely high. Um, and you'll see uh, what is in control with lost contact. Um, I lost contact as well. 
I'm back on. Okay. All right. I don't know if that was just me, but it seemed like we, on, we lost contact. Yeah. Okay. Um, shall I con shall I continue? All right. We're we are on lodging, and uh, I was just basically saying yes. that in September of twenty one, we were just twenty one percent pre pandemic levels, and improved by one hundred seventy six percent compared to the lowest point, uh, which during the pandemic, which was April twenty twenty. Next slide, please. You'll see that this, of course, affected the transit transient occupancy tax uh, that the city collects, which, as you know, is 14% um, on uh, on rooms. Uh, our peak was a, a great year in 20 in 2019, where hotel bed tax contributed 318.9 million dollars to the city's general fund. It obviously dropped in 20 and 21, as you can see starting to make a, a good comeback now in 22 and um, we're setting a goal of getting back to 300 million in tot by 2024 current fiscal year to date cumulative tot reflect an increase of about 31 million or you know, 143 percent year over year so we're starting to see um, some good signs of recovery there as well next slide on the job side, it matches uh, kind of the occupancy and the visitation. You'll see a drop during the pandemic, and we're starting to see some signs of recovery. We averaged in 2019 over half a million jobs, and we are currently at 460 uh, million, uh, million 460,000 uh, uh, jobs. Um, so we are uh, just 16% pre pandemic levels. So we're pleased to see um, some strong signs of recovery on the jobs front. Another, another look at the employment rates and you'll see how um, uh, this current year we've gone from 369,000 jobs all the way up to 460,000 jobs. So uh, as, as was predicted, um, jobs are starting to come back in the fall and um, the leisure and hospitality sector in LA County. Audience for one in eight jobs in LA County. Next slide. The convention center was uh, unfortunately largely empty during the pandemic. We attempted, we worked closely with HERE and the hospitality training command uh, Hospitality Training Academy and the uh, good folks at Levy Foods here at the Convention Center. And we uh, implemented an emergency senior meals program with the county and the city Department of Aging and over a million meals were prepared here in our kitchen. Um, we hosted uh, over 40 film and still photography productions. So many of the pandemic related protocols for uh, TV and movie production required more space, which we obviously had here. So we were able to book quite a few productions at, uh, at the convention center. We uh, converted the West Hall, as you know, into a temporary WNBA arena for the LA Sparks because their schedule uh, required them to uh, not be able to use the uh, Staples Center um, for the first part of their season. So we were able to host them here at the, in the West Hall. We also served as a PPE distribution center, a staging area for the mayor's toy distribution last holiday season. And of course, as you know, we hosted a, a medical relief center early in the pandemic, um, in, it just uh, in case uh, it was needed. I'm also proud to say that we've uh, partnered with Safe Parking LA to launch a program site uh, here on our campus. And lastly, um, we were able to achieve our LEED Gold recertification during this time period. Next slide. We're pleased to you know, share that we uh, opened, uh, reopened the convention center. Um, top left corner is the LA Art Show, which opened in July, was our first real event back uh, that the public was able to join us at. And, um, uh, concurrently, on uh, the bottom left-hand corner, Mayor Garcetti joined us that same day uh, to celebrate the convention center's 50th anniversary. 
and we invited uh, dozens, hundreds of uh, alumni employees that worked at the convention center over the last 50 years. And uh, we were pleased that uh, quite a few people came back to join us uh, for that 50th anniversary celebration. The top right hand corner, we also initiated a program called the LACC Career Academy, where we're working with our convention clients to introduce unique job and career paths for uh, for young uh, high school students in uh, the LAUSD area and give underserved kids an opportunity to discover career paths that they may not have thought of. And so um, we've been working, our first one with, was with the Mobile World Congress, a large tech conference that we had in October. And we just had one the other day with the LA Auto Show and um, had two high schools so far come join us uh, uh, at those conventions. And the bottom uh, right hand corner is, shows our current event, which is the LA Art Show, or, I mean, I'm sorry, the LA Auto Show, which uh, started uh, last weekend and goes through this uh, uh, upcoming weekend. Next slide. And our last slide, a tourism industry outlook overall, while the goal is to, is to reach 50 million visitors by 24, as I said, it might even be reached in 23, according to tourism economics for most recent forecast. The recent opening of the US borders to international travel earlier this month on, October, on November 8th has already spurred a promising spike in bookings and interest in future travel. In the meantime, the tourism industry recovery has been supported by strong domestic visitation, as you can imagine. And um, the convention center has 19 citywide conventions uh, on the books for 2022, which is a strong year, which will help encourage business travels return to Los Angeles. I believe that's the last slide. Is that right, Kim? Yeah. So I'm happy to answer any questions that the committee may have for me. Thank you so much, Stone. Appreciate that. I see also on the Zoom, Patty McJennett. Good to see you. Uh, Patty with the tourism board. I'll turn to Mr. Lee for questions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Don't. So in 2019, the numbers, the record numbers that we have and what's projected for 2022, are the conventions uh, that you're scheduling, are, are some of them just not happening or do you feel like they've moved? Like are other cities being aggressive during our downtime? No, you know, the, our, our industry is such that uh, conventions need to be booked five to 10 years in advance. So there really isn't place for anyone else to go. Um, mm -hmm. I'm very uh, thankful for the tourism board and our, and our management here at the convention center. We are able to keep over 75% of the conventions that canceled and we are able to find them new slots later in the, in the schedule. Um, uh, we had, you know, over 300 different events from large conventions to smaller local shows uh, canceled during this pandemic. Um, but uh, going forward, you know, um, I would say starting beginning of next year, we're kind of maintaining the calendar that we had already booked and then plus filling in some gaps with uh, some of the shows that were canceled. So the numbers would be down just from some of the cancellations? from 2019 to 22 I mean, you're saying they're booked five years in advance so the 22 numbers 22 numbers like i said we had 19 citywide conventions which is a lot it's a strong year so we're hopeful that uh uh we should be back what 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 is changed is the attendance at each of the shows right so um we're seeing currently 25 to 33 percent attendance uh from normal attendance numbers i think we'll see you know a, a you know, a similar drop in the auto show attendance. But the fact that these associations and um, uh, businesses are willing to have the conventions anyway is uh, is, is encouraging, um, you know, even, and you're, you know, we're seeing, of course, the hybrid events too. So those numbers that we're seeing 25 to 33% are the actual in through the door attendance, but they're able to make up a lot of that with the online, uh, online attendance too. Thanks, John. John, quick question on, uh, if you can, just an update on the um, convention center expansion, where are we at um, to date? Yeah, as you know, we were working with um, our partners at AEG and um, their P3 partners at the plenary group. We were pre prepared to 
present a proposal to the council in March of 2020 um, that uh, outlined a deal to uh, do a P3 partnership and uh, complete a ex large expansion and modernization of the convention center. Um, obviously that was put on hold. We have uh, recently for the past few months been going back to that proposal, reworking some of the numbers, obviously construction costs have risen um, and there are other adjustments that we've made on the revenue side and expense side. And we're hoping to present something to the council early next year. I'm hoping that we can get something in front of the council in January uh, that will allow us to complete the pre-development phase, which would, you know, which is basically completing the construction drawings and finalizing the, you know, 30, 40 year agreement that we would have uh, uh, with AEG and plenary to, to not only complete the project, but also to manage and operate it. Got it. Thank you for that. Stay tuned. We're coming back to you. Let's do this. Patty, um, how are you holding up there? I know um, this is a big industry for us, rebound coming out of the pandemic. Um, anything you'd like to add? I'm, I'm happy um, to hear we have, we're seeing more um, international travelers come through. Yeah, just, just a couple things. And probably the first thing I want to say is a big thank you to Dome for his partnership and to the city council for your guys' support in terms of the allocation that was one time, we realized that, but to, which allowed us to really be back in the marketplace and be competitive as destinations came back. Because with our reduced revenue sources, it made all the world of difference for us to actually be in the market. So a big thanks to you all for support of tourism, which as you all know is, is such a strong, um, you know, economic but more importantly employment contributor to los angeles yes. um, with regards to international um you know november 8th was kind of a celebratory day for all of us in terms of international coming back we are seeing um surges as you guys have just probably read in the last couple days um happening in some of the european markets where you know germany austria a few others are kind of locking back down so we'll have to just kind of really monitor that closely, but we're still feeling very encouraged, certainly by Mexico, certainly by Canada, you know, those are some of our bigger markets. So we'll, we'll continue to monitor. We have managed to keep our offices, um, you know, not necessarily our representatives, but our offices open through all of this. And so we have, I think, a competitive advantage of being in place, ready to, you know, activate as soon as things, um, continue to move forward as they are. So Thanks. we're hopeful, we're optimistic. Um, I think we are in a good place as far as at least having a competitive advantage. Great, and great to see the cruise industry back here, um, seeing the, uh, the ships sail um, in and out of our, our harbor uh, here oh, in Pedro on the LA waterfront. Really excited about that. Enormous, enormous. And yeah. I felt I wanted to be at the Caribbean World Caribbean event, but couldn't. But the, just watching yeah. them all come back is huge for us. Yep. And for yeah. our hotels. Grateful to the, the port for um, bringing them back and um, yes. into some of the long term deals here. Outstanding. And along with the wa LA waterfront, this is a place to be. So, big thank you to all is what I really do want to express. Thanks, for Patty. Support. Thanks. Members, anything else for this on this item? Thank you both, Don Patty, for your presence here. Don, thanks for the presentation. We'll continue this and look forward to the next uh, quarter's presentation, okay? Thank you all. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. Don, I think since last time we saw you have uh, added a grandchild to the, uh, <laughs> the family? That's right, the second. The third's coming in February. Cheers, cheers. Love to the family. Thanks. Okay, with, mem with that, members, um, Continue item one. Let's turn now to item number two. If you could read that into the record, please, Mr. Clerk. Item number two, Harbor Department rel report relative to motion Buscaina Corretz, um, relative to the backlog of container vessels waiting to enter the port, including the causes, environmental impacts, and actions the department is taking to address the issue and related matters. Thank you. This was um, an item that was continued to, to, um, to today's meeting on an, uh, an update from the port. Um, I believe we have, um, let's see, Mike DiBernardo here on the call. I see you. 
Uh, and since we last met, uh, the recent announcement uh, from the White House administration, I'd like to hear how uh, these infrastructure dollars um, will be coming down to the port as part of uh, President Biden's uh, bill that was just uh, passed and, and signed. Um, with that, welcome uh, Mike. Uh, Mike DiBernardo, the Deputy Executive Director of Marketing and Customer Relations at the Port of Los Angeles. Thanks for joining us, Mike. Thank you, and good afternoon, uh, council members, and thank you for this opportunity to speak. Don, Don's a tough act to follow. He did a, a great presentation. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I'll give you a little bit of a lay of the land of what's going on right now, and then I'll have David, who's also on here, David Libatique, also speak about the, the, uh, the, 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 the grant funds. But right now, as you know, we do have a number of ships at anchor, and, you, and you've heard that uh, uh, from a number of news reports. Uh, this morning, we had 94 ships uh, at anchor of all varieties. Uh, not only just container ships, but we had tankers and uh, bulk vessels as well. Of those, yeah, those 94s are waiting to enter both ports of LA and Long Beach, correct? That is correct. Not just LA. Correct. Okay. Okay. And then there's 61 container ships out there for both Port of LA and Port of Long Beach. For us, uh, we have 27 of those uh, container ships waiting to come into the Port of LA. And uh, one of the new things that has taken place uh, that the PMA, as well as the Marine Exchange, has done is that at one time all the ships were just rushing in to get to anchor so that they can get an allocation of labor. And what the, the PMA and what uh, the, the Marine Exchange and the members have done is that the allocation is gonna be done further out at sea. So nobody's really rushing to get in. Uh, they're actually drifting a little bit coming between Asia and the West Coast. So you're probably not gonna see as many ships at anchor as that begins to, to unfold. So that, that gives an earlier allocation of labor again, once it departs uh, Asia. And uh, again, the, the, the shipping lines are not rushing to get here. Uh, we see, and actually the numbers are down a little bit. Uh, we had at one time 22 ships en route over the next three days. Today we had 13. So that, that's an indication of some of the ships going a little bit slower uh, coming in. Unfortunately, some of the ships are waiting about 18 days at anchor. And a lot of that has to do with a lot of the small shipping companies that have entered the market. And uh, prior to the pandemic, we had about 12 shipping lines that uh, called regularly at the Port of LA, Port of Long Beach. Now we're up to about 19 to 20. And these are new shipping lines that Home Depot, that Walmart, that Alibaba had contracted with to bring into the port. And the interesting thing was, uh, you know, these ships would show up at anchor, get a phone call, where can I dock? So they actually didn't have a home to dock until the very last minute. And therefore, they don't have a regular terminal to go to. So we're still seeing some of the ships out at anchor that are waiting to get a, a berth priority. And unfortunately, every berth is tied up right now. We have 18 ships, 18 container ships in port today. <clears throat> so every berth is occupied. Uh, with that, the PMA is also allocating labor to make sure all the, all the ships in San Pedro Bay get enough labor to keep working. So you don't want a ship sitting idle at a wharf with no labor. So what the PMA is doing is making sure they're allocating that every terminal gets labor so that we can keep the terminals fluid. Uh, one of the things that we, we do, and, and David is part of this as well as Gene and Avine here at the port, is that every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we have a half hour phone call led by Port Envoy uh, John Picari uh, from the White House. And we bring in the shipping lines and we talk about what are they doing to expedite cargo off the port. And that's one of the big things is trying to get cargo out of the terminals as quickly as possible uh, so that we can free up space so that we can continue to work the other ships. Uh, back in November, we had, um, and, we, and we looked at numbers that are nine days and older on terminal. We had about 30, uh, 38,000 containers that were nine days and older just in the Port of LA. Port of Long Beach had similar numbers. And now uh, we're happy to report today we had 19,000. So the numbers have come down through all the efforts of, uh, of the Port Envoy uh, meetings with the, the shipping line executives, and also just expediting cargo. But in addition, we put in a little bit of a kicker in there that says, if you don't get the cargo out uh, nine days and older, we're going to start assessing a $100 fee per day compounded daily until you get it out. And that's really moved the needle on getting people to, to move their freight. We haven't instituted the fee yet. Uh, we actually uh, threatened it on November 1st. We deferred it uh, to November 15th. And now we deferred it to next week, November 29th, uh, that we would start implementing it unless we see a downward trend of containers aging on terminal. And we are seeing that. So that's one of the things that we're working on here at the port. 
The other big thing is empty containers. And I know that that's been an issue for the folks out in Wilmington uh, with empty containers that are parked everywhere. And actually, if you drive around the city, you see a lot of containers just parked in unusual spots that you never saw before. And basically, it's, uh, it's because there's so many empties out there that need to come back to the port, load on a ship. Shipping lines are doing a great job in loading everything that they can, profiling the ship when they leave. However, there's still a surplus. And as of this morning, we had about 72,000 empties just in the port of LA on both our container terminals and our off-dock yards that we created. And I think our, our report back to you shows where those off-dock yards are. Uh, we're creating additional ones as we speak uh, in order to, to deck empties. And what that does is it frees up chassis, allows the person to go into the terminal, pick up an import, and take it to the distribution center. So we're trying to stay fluid on that, trying to accept those empties so that chassis can be reused. Shipping lines are also bringing in what they call sweeper ships. And those are ships that are picking up empties. So they're, they're ships that they're redeploying from South America or from the Canada, Canada ports, coming down here, picking up empties to fill it out. And we've had a grand total of about 30,000 empties uh, go out uh, on these. Uh, actually, I take that back. 60,000 empties have come out and, and come down here and evacuated empties. But there's still a lot more. As I said, we have 72,000. Long Beach probably has about 50,000, so quite a bit of, of empty containers that still need to be vacated and get back to Asia. So we're, we're doing all we can uh, in order to help the situation with empties, uh, with on-dock storage, uh, as well as near-dock storage here at the port in Terminal Island. And in uh, primarily the, the spots are in Terminal Island and a couple of spots over in uh, the West Basin area. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of a, of a preview of what's going on here at the port. Uh, we have seen our, our intermodal numbers down. The railroads have caught up. I know that was in the news as well, that the railroads were behind. The railroads have caught up, and now they're much more fluid uh, than they were before, which has definitely been a benefit uh, for the terminals. So if there's no questions on that, I'll turn it over to David in regards to... Uh, uh, the, yeah, the uh, quick question. And um, saw the, the head of the, um, the Truck Errors Association uh, saying that there's um, it's not an issue of needing more um, uh, truckers, but there's an issue of a lack of tr chassis, which I've heard for, for many, many months here, aside from, of course, you know, the spacing, the space at the terminal, um, the, the consumer demand, um, the empties need to go somewhere. So um, what's the port doing uh, to address the, the, the amount of, of, of chassis? Oh, that, that's a great question. And, uh, um, so what, just so you know, there's um, a fleet of chassis called pool of pool chassis. And that is where uh, there's a great chassis fleet that can be used by a number of people. That represents about 45% uh, of the chassis fleet. The other 55% is actually trucker owned or, or customer owned. So on the 45%, which is called pool of pools, and they're owned by DCLI, Track, and Flexivan, they built the pool on four days dwell out on the street which means you know, containers should be out for four days with that chassis. What we're seeing, unfortunately, is we actually got up to a peak of 9.9 .9 days of these containers out on the street. And that chassis pool was not built for 9.9 .9 days. Hmm. And, and again, a lot of that was you know, the, the old saying, you don't build it for Easter Sunday. You don't build the church for Easter Sunday. But uh, a lot of the issues were because people can bring back the empties. And now that we've had an uh, established an outlet for people to bring back empties, we're starting to see that number come down and actually, as of today, it's at 9.9, .9, we're at 8.7. Still a lot, lot more room to go, uh, but people are bringing in their own. They're bringing in a, a, an empty container, decking it, freeing up the chassis, and using that chassis to pick up an import and move it out. So you kind of cycle that. So the terminals are looking at doing dual transactions to make sure that you get that done. Or you bring in your own chassis if it's a shipper-owned or trucker-owned chassis. And then also, lastly, on, on the trucker issue, um, hearing from trucking companies that 40% uh, of the appointments go unused. How accurate is that? Yeah, so it's actually got, it, it's come down somewhat. Uh, we're starting to see people making appointments. Uh, it, you know, if you looked at our gate cams, and, and we have gate cams on our, on our website, <clears throat> if you looked at them two weeks ago, the gates were empty both day and night. And, uh, and, and not empty, but they were not busy. Yeah, I saw photos I could tier 400 there's not one truck in sight yeah and so, ago, since yeah. we instituted this 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 uh excessive uh, uh dwell time uh, uh fee 
we're starting to see those gates much more busier. And I think we're down to about 30% unused of appointments. And, uh, you know, a lot of the, you know, there was a lot of issues. Everybody was saying this or that. A lot of people were saying, I'm not making an appointment because I can't bring back an empty. So it's kind of a, you know, there's, it's, it's a, a domino effect. If you can't do something else, you're not going to be able to do that. And again, that's why the creation of these empty yards is, has been helpful. Uh, and it's not the end all. Uh, there's also shipping lines that are looking at inland depots out in the Inland Empire to both receive empties and actually move import loads out there to, again, free up space in the, in the yard. So hopefully if they do go out to these inland yards, these imports, they get decked so that the chassis is created and used for the next move. Appreciate that, Mike. Um, so we have David Libatique here, members. Um, David, last week during the annual NLC National League of Cities City Summit, I had an opportunity to speak in a fireside live chat with uh, Secretary Buttigieg, Mayor Pete, to us, um, where we were celebrating the long-term infrastructure bill. We spoke on the importance of these infrastructure dollars coming to ports across the country, even more so um, in, in Los Angeles. Um, mentioning uh, the port envoy that was here. Um, so tell us if, if you can share with us, you know, it was important for local leaders to make sure those dollars go straight to local municipalities and not um, go through um, state government where, where they, we have to check boxes and apply and, and demand and, 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 and beg. Um, how much of this, of these infrastructure dollars will we'll see here um, at our port complex? Uh, thank you, Chairman, uh, for that question, uh, committee members. Uh, we hope to uh, rebalance what has been uh, historic inequity in the amount of federal funding that goes to the East Coast, Gulf Coast versus the West Coast. Um, through this process uh, that we've been working with uh, USDOT, White House National Economic Council, as well as the governor's office, uh, we've been trying to connect our infrastructure asks to um, long-term fixes to the supply chain congestion that we see. So our major asks are, fall into three buckets. Um, to Mike DiBernardo's point, you know, what type of infrastructure do we need uh, to serve as cargo support for existing marine terminals so that we can deck empties, make sure that equipment is circulating, and make sure that the truck drivers can pull off successful gate transactions. So we are looking at grade separation dollars for uh, to, to permanently activate 80 acres on Terminal Island. We are um, also uh, you know, working with the state and the federal government to identify uh, what we think needs to be uh, two or three strategic sites throughout the region, again, to allow our uh, the twin ports, both LA and Long Beach, to be able to flex come future cargo surges. Um, the other issue is uh, workforce resiliency. And so uh, one of our top asks uh, will be going after funding for the Workforce Training Center. Uh, we are now partnered up with the Port of Long Beach in developing a 20 acre site up by, the, uh, by Anchorage Road, uh, adjacent the community of Wilmington to develop a goods movement workforce training center. Um, that would that would service Longshore, but also jobs across the supply chain to ensure that from truck driver to warehouse worker, that we have uh, adequate supply again to, to be able to deal with cargo surges in the future. Um, in addition, we can't forget the impact that congestion has on surrounding communities. So we are closely monitoring available funding that can be used to advance our zero emission goals, especially with respect to drayage and ultimately with respect to cargo handling equipment. So we're looking at infrastructure dollars that can be deployed um, uh, uh, in near, uh, near the port to support um, the support near-term deployment of zero emission drayage trucks. Um, in addition to those projects, we're looking, we're looking at a collection, a handful of um, rail projects uh, and uh, first and last mile connector projects, uh, SR 47 Navy Way and Seaside Avenue Interchange. We're looking at um, uh, various Terminal Island rail projects, which amount to about 25 million. And then we're also looking at uh, additional shore power installations in the Outer Harbor, as well as grid upgrades. So all of those projects, uh, there is a bucket of money available in the IIJA 
to which we can apply for, for funding for those projects. Um, whether it's the Port Infrastructure Development Program, which got about uh, 2.25 billion over five years. Uh, that is the, the single port specific program um, in IJA, and there's a host of funding that's being distributed through the Army Corps. Um, in addition, uh, we're looking at various um, various port eligible programs uh, from infra, formerly known as Fastlane under the Obama administration, um, to uh, projects of national regional significance, uh, to the freight formula programs. Um, all told, those port eligible pots um, stack up to about $35 billion available over the next five years. So we are certainly going to put our project list together and go after it. Thank you so much for that, Mr. Lee. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Hey, David, we, we've heard so much about the federal dollars that we're getting coming in. Is any of that sort of to help us out of our current like situation? Or is that all just for future, future projects? Okay, uh, great question. So um, the funding that's going to be made available after the president signed IIJA, they almost instantaneously put out what they are calling their action plan. Um, and the action plan for ports and waterways, they announced that within 45 days, they're going to be announcing grant awards from the last round of port infrastructure development grants. And within 90 days, they're going to be releasing another round of funding. They've really front loaded that specific pot of funding to try and accelerate the projects that can provide some instant relief. Um, but uh, those projects will take time to construct and it'll take time for that money to come uh, to, to really flow out of DC. And so uh, it's going to be a combination of the operational measures that Mike DiBernardo has referenced. Um, I think what the, the best way to look at the funding that's coming from IIJA is that it is going to help us put in infrastructure that will help us avoid future disruptions of this type. And so that we're trying to take the lessons from the present to inform the projects we will be going after um, in this infrastructure bill. Sure, I, I'm sure, I know we're all happy about the, you know, receiving the, our fair share of dollars from the feds to improve um, our port, but there's no, there's no sort of immediate grant to help us with what we're, you're saying all the different projects that we're looking at are, are all just going to affect the future so that, you know, we don't, we're not in this situation again. Uh, th that's, that, that's correct. Thank you, Mr. We, yeah, thank, to John's point, um, we, we have had um, some direct funding from the state to relieve some of this backlog. Is that correct, David? Uh, yeah, we're in similar discussions with the state about getting funding, especially for the Workforce Training Center. Uh, that is one of the major needs that came out, that has come out in both discussions with the White House and the governor's offices. We need a home to be able to train up these workers um, and, and ensure that uh, um, there's adequate workforce availability moving forward. Uh, that's one that we really want to expedite and uh, move forward in, um, yep. in the next couple of years. Go ahead, John. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so I forgot, I think, I think, Mike, you were talking about this earlier, about the shortage, and uh, Mr. Chair, you were mentioning it also. What's, what's causing the shortage of the actual chassis that are needed? So it's not just a shortage of drivers. You're saying it's a shortage of trucks. What's causing that? No, so the chassis, uh, I think we talked about the chassis shortage, uh, and that's caused by... Uh, the pull of pulls not being built on a, a, um, a platform of four days of dwell on the street. Right now we're seeing almost nine days of dwell. And with that, uh, there's a shortage of chassis within the terminal. So all the terminals are asking for a driver to bring back a chassis or an empty to free up that chassis to be used for an import load. So you're trying to cycle as best as you can. And we have seen that, that, that dwell on street dwell down because again, uh, we freed up some space to, to receive some of the empties uh, that have been out there dwelling at some of the distribution centers. Yeah, council member, in, in simple form, uh, what was happening early on is because of the Russia cargo coming through the San Pedro Bay, the warehouses throughout the region really filled up and the containers were being drawn out of the marine terminals and were remained loaded 
and on chassis somewhere out in the region because they had no place to devan them. So those chassis got tied up and weren't cycling back into the system. That caused the container terminals to actually back up and get congested. So by the time those containers were devanned, now that truck driver is sitting on an empty they can't get rid of because the terminals are too full to accept the empties. So it was a double whammy really impacting the chassis supply and leading to those street dwells that Mike DiBernardo is talking about. Yeah, and, and you do have allocations that the shipping lines have at each of the terminals as far as how many empties they can store on the terminal before they're loaded on the next ship going out. Those allocations were met. And that's why, as David pointed out, people were, were holding onto containers until that allocation opened up. Okay, that makes sense. Thanks, Chris. You're welcome. Mike, something I'm very interested in before we, um, we conclude this item is um, tray pack, as we know, the automated uh, terminal there. How many lifts per hour are you seeing there compared with the uh, non-automated terminal? Can you know, you uh, I don't have that number. I would have to look that up and see or, or ask the terminal actually uh, to see how they're doing. Um, but we, we can uh, surely uh, check on that. We don't, we don't have that number offhand. Okay. Uh, we, we actually look at the overall port. And unfortunately, we look at the overall port, how long the ships are staying in port. And that looks at the, the, the overall for all, all the, the terminals, the gross moves per hour. The problem is that ships are staying in port longer because you're getting allocation of labor. So if you want, I'm going to give you an example. For these big ships, you know, the 13,000 TU ship, you want to put five or six cranes on it. Unfortunately, the PMA is only allocating maybe four. So the ship is here longer. Uh, so that when we look at the overall numbers, our, our uh, overall uh, gross moves per hour is down because you look at the total stay and how many moves you did within that total stay. Yeah, I see. Okay, thanks for that. I see Stephanie on the Zoom. Stephanie, would you like to contribute anything before we move on? I think they covered it all. Thanks, Councilman. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, one last thing to raise. I, yeah. I was remiss and I, I want to correct uh, an answer I gave to Councilmember Lee about immediate relief. Um, if funding is made available for two or three strategic sites within the region that could be stood up quickly, then uh, that could actually provide immediate relief. And those are ongoing discussions. Uh, also, uh, funding for ZE drainage equipment for, for near-term near deployment of that equipment could provide relief in terms of emissions reductions for surrounding communities. That could happen pretty quickly as well. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. I was wondering if there were any dollars to acquire any sort of space. So you're saying if, if we found it, we could... We can figure out how to get it. And that's what the governor's executive order is for. They're looking at uh, properties in control of the state, and they're going to make those properties available um, and identify operators to be able to open them up, serve either as staging facilities or to serve as places for um, uh, long-dwelling cargo to be pushed out and kept uh, for a long term. Okay. I'll talk to the council member of the 15th district and tell them that. <laughs> Thanks. We're on it. I do want to again recognize the port for moving quickly. I know we identified 13 acres uh, to store some of the, uh, the, the empties uh, that's helped with the backlog. Um, and, and with that, you were seeing um, fewer containers in the adjacent Wilmington neighborhood. Also want to thank uh, Port PD in partnership with LAPD on holding trucking companies accountable for parking their trucks in residential um, areas. Um, so, um, and also members of, of uh, the, the, um, the city family who have, have come, that the general managers, the building and safety, um, as well as um, BOE and others who in L LA Fire, um, who've been active and, and engaged with, uh, with my staff here. Yeah, I think okay, those, so Wednesday, those Wednesday meetings that uh, your staff has put together yeah. is beneficial, uh, getting all the, all the folks involved and talking about uh, what they're looking at and i think that's been great so we appreciate, appreciate that, you right. putting that together so thank you thank you okay so with item two we'll continue um till the next meeting and um, get um, updates as we um, address the backlog issues at the port so thank sure. you uh, sure. definitely thank you for joining us as well you're welcome happy thanksgiving everyone happy thanksgiving thank you with that members let's turn to item number three on the agenda item three if you can read that into the record i'll defer to mr bonnet on it 
Item 3, Board of Airport Commissioners report relative to a 10-year contract with ABM Aviation Incorporated for management and operations of remote employee parking lots and provision of employee transportation services at the Los Angeles International Airport and administrative exemption from the California Environmental Quality Act pursuant to Article 2, Section 2F of the Los Angeles City CEQA guidelines. Uh, Mr. Chair, I had some issues with this when it was last year. Uh, yep. My staff and I have been working with the airport. We're all good, and I would move approval. Very good. Uh, I'll second it with that roll call vote on approval of item three. Councilmember Buscaino. Yes. Councilmember Bonin. Yes. Councilmember Lee. Yes. The item is approved. Thank you so much. With that, our final item, item number 11, held by Mr. Bonin. Uh, why don't you read that into the record? Mr. Item Clark. number 11, uh, the Board of Airport Commissioners report relative to an amendment to 20 concession agreements at LAX and administrative Item exemption. 11, can you all hear me? Mr. Chair, can you hear me? I can hear you, uh, Councilman. I think... Sorry, I was on mute, everyone. Oh, all good. Board of Airport Commissioners report relative to an amendment to 20 concessions agreements at LAX and administrative exemption from CEQA pursuant to Article 2, Section 2F of the Los Angeles C City CEQA guidelines. Very good. Mike, you're on. Uh, thanks. Uh, I want to thank uh, uh, Laura for the work they've been doing on this, but I, I also want to thank uh, all of the workers who, who called in during public comment uh, and expressed uh, concern about this, uh, both um, the, uh, the, the the optics and and the reality of us uh, providing rent relief to um, uh, uh, companies, some of whom may need it, and many of whom don't, uh, ones that are doing en enormously well, uh, while our, our, our workers are are still suffering. Uh, people who, who who work in and around the airport. So I, I guess my, my, my question to, to the airport would be, um, given the, the opposition that we're, we're hearing from airport workers on rent relief going to companies that, that, that don't need it, is there any way Lala can, 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 can recraft a proposal uh, that offers rent relief to, to just the small operators that need it instead of blanket relief to all of the operators, including the ones that are really thriving. Um, hi, Council Member. This is Justin Urbachi from, hey. uh, from Los Angeles World Airport. Um, we're, we're, we, we can't, we, we can't, um, we can't uh, allocate the relief discriminately. We have to, to treat um, all of the, the providers equally. And providing this this relief, uh, why why is that? That's a requirement from the FAA. That we can't be discriminate. We can't be discriminate in uh, in allocating those funds. Uh, but that's the kind of thing we really need to be talking to our congressional members uh, about uh, to to see if there's any way we can uh, do this more judiciously. Um, I, I understand that you've kind of got your hands tied on that, but. Um, in the absence of a, of a more targeted approach, I, I, I just can't stomach the idea of supporting the additional rent relief for the companies that, 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 that are thriving, uh, at least until we you know, first addre address the airport living wage and, and, and make sure that as concessions do better, so do airport workers. So um, uh, I understand where you're coming from, but I'll be a, a, a no vote on this. Very good, any other members? Okay, uh, so with that, um, seeing no other comments, we'll call vote, please, on item 11. Councilmember Buscaino. Aye. Councilmember Bonin. No. Councilmember Lee. Aye. Uh, two to one, the item is approved. Very good. That's the last item on today's agenda. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, thank you, members of the public. Call me, uh, Councilmember, um, so uh, the item number four still exists on our Oh, agenda. thank you, Mr. Clerk. I see that item four. Um, and the reason why, okay, we have to, um, yeah, I have on my notes to um, read the rec read that on into the record, please. 
Item number four, um, Board of Airport Commissioners report relative to granting a permanent easement to the Low Trust in connection with the implementation of the Landside Access Modernization Program and categorical exemption from CEQA pursuant to Article 3, Class 5, Subsection 4 of the Los Angeles City CEQA Guidelines. So understanding on item four, we have to disapprove it based on a technical planning issue. Is that the understanding? With that, I'll ask for no vote on item four. Um, roll call, please. Councilmember Buscaino? No. Councilmember Bonin? No. Councilmember Lee? No. The item is disapproved. Thank you so much. With that, now um, we've been through the entire agenda. Thank you all for joining us. We're now adjourned. Thank you so Happy much. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving.